Yeah, that's exactly right. So coming up next around T plus 49 minutes is Starship re-entry. Now, this is typically a portion of flight where we don't have communications with spacecraft because they're re-entering the Earth's atmosphere at or around orbital velocity, about eight kilometers per second or roughly five miles per second, super fast. Now at those speeds, the spacecraft's interaction with the atmosphere results in friction and creates a plasma field around the vehicle. That blanket of plasma distorts communication frequencies, so all we're left we're, so we're basically left with a brief communications blackout. Uh, now we might get some telemetry back through a connection uh, to the tracking and data relay satellite system, also known as TDRS. But if the plasma doesn't entirely block it, that connection will be uh, at a very slow data rate and definitely too slow for any video. But that's why Starship and Starlink are a great partnership. Starship is so big that it will leave a wake or a hole in the plasma field as it flies through an atmosphere. You can think of a wake kind of like uh, when you see a boat going through the ocean, it sort of leaves a, a trail behind it. Um, there's some of those great views from uh, from Starlink giving us uh, views of Starship's onboard videos. And so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us, just like we're seeing these videos now, see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. Now, this is only the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry. So even though we do have these great visuals now, uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high speed data during re-entry. Yeah, that's right. And one of the really primary reasons we want to use Starlink is to just gather as much data as possible. It's been said the data is the payload on one of these flights um, where we're just, we're putting this flight hardware in a real flight environment, trying to learn about it as much as possible. Uh, Re-entry is gonna be a really critical phase of flight. Uh, we really wanna know how the ship's gonna perform, especially that heat shield as we're going through the hypersonic re-entry. So if something were to go wrong during this re-entry, we want as many paths as possible to collect that information, that data, just to, again, just continually feed back uh, into star the Starship program to make each flight more reliable, more successful. Acquisition single versus. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Now we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. Now, uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those flaps there. So getting data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going to be critical to eventually bringing Starships back from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps, that's one of the things um, that, that enables Starship to help control itself and, and, and survive the heat of re-entry, which like we said before, we're expecting that re-entry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. 
Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are is still. To you by Starlink. Yeah, the Starlinks <laughs> are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kay. And and it's important to note with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities, even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory. So the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would keep getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have used through entry, this is incredible. Yeah. Again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat shield tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat shield tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. Yeah, now this was one of the critical or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest that Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor here by... The atmosphere is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed. But you want the vehicle to remain stable. You want those heat shield tiles pointed down uh, so they can absorb the heat of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and so that's the purpose that they are serving during the hypersonic phase and then again during the subsonic phase. Absolutely. So like we said, these views are being provided by uh, a couple Starlink terminals that are, are positioned uh, on Starship itself. As that plasma builds, it, we're hoping that we can bring these views back to you, uh, but you can see the telemetry there on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, if you watch closely, you can see the speed decelerating. Again, that's the friction um, of the atmosphere resulting in this plasma field, or excuse me, the blanket um, that is uh, potentially blocking the, the Starlink terminals right now. So we'll bring those views back to you if we get them. But right now, for those of you that have recently joined, uh, Starship is currently re-entering Earth's atmosphere. This is super exciting because it's the furthest and fast, fastest that Starship has ever flown. It's just absolutely incredible. Major test milestone, something we wanted to accomplish on flight two, getting to it today. So just awesome.